Hello everyone, my name is Adam Yabu. I'm from the University of Maryland College Park and uh, I'm majoring in environmental science and technology with a minor in GIS and I was a lucky participant in the Ecology Plus program. So first I'll, I'm going to talk about some of my findings during my project. And so uh, for my project I basically created a model to predict how the landscape of DC is going to change over 100 years. I was always interested in urbanization and uh, the whole uh, aspect of increasing human populations and transitions from rural to urban societies. And so I used the USGS, the US Geological Survey uh, data, data set, and in which they predict, create a predictive model for how different urban areas are going to change over time across the United States. So I reclassified their 17 codes into five different categories, which I used to create my data set and uh, created a visual in, the, in ArcGIS software. And uh, this is basically uh, the animation I created. So I looked at different uh, radiuses from the center of uh, DC. So I used the 10 mile radius, 25 mile radius, 50 to 100 mile radius. And this was from a span of 2005 to 2095. And in the 10 mile radius, you can see that wild areas are, and in the 25 mile radius, you can see that wild areas percent change is over 100% which should tell you that already the already minimal amount of green spaces in wild areas are disappearing even more than they should be, where they should actually be protected and not given to expansion and urban development. And uh, in the 50 mile radius, we can see that the percent change is also reducing, which, in which we're losing uh, over 56% of urban areas, uh, over 56% of protected green spaces. And in areas where uh, these green spaces are actually uh, not disappearing is because there are some uh, federal mandates, such as uh, the Patuxent Wildlife Preserve, in which these areas are federally protected. And uh, so uh, this inspired me to continue using GIS to ask more questions as to how uh, different, different uh, wild spaces should be protected, especially since urban areas are prone to different uh, environmental impacts, such as uh, the urban heat island effect, in which when there's a loss of tree canopies and different vegetation, it increases the sun's rays and the direct impacts on human health and benefits in that area. And uh, I'm going to talk about my experience uh, in the remote internship. And uh, so part of the training in Montana, we took a tour of Yellowstone National Park, which was my first experience ever being in a national park. So that was amazing to be out in the field. And uh, we learned about the foundations of GIS in which, even though I had taken a few courses since I was a GIS minor, it never really clicked to me about how I could apply them in an ecological setting. And uh, also learning from the local scientists who worked at Montana State University was also a big impact because I could actually see where I could apply my GIS skills and experiences into doing my own research project in the future. And uh, the remote collaboration part was also very beneficial. I would have uh, weekly or biweekly uh, meetings with Travis, uh, depending on my class schedule for the week and tests and stuff. And I also looked into how uh, my data sets and how I was organizing my data in ArcGIS was uh, assessing the different spatial relationships, cleaning up my data, learning how to extract data uh, was a big part. I always had a, a list of questions for Travis. I'll text him like, hey, check this out. We're going to answer this tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, a big part of this was also the analysis. Uh, it's always nice to have uh, to really gather your data and have it all uh, set and stuff, but what happens after you have all those final numbers? You're supposed to have a, interpret them to make them more beneficial and to answer a certain type of question. And also gave me the opportunity to actually uh, use some programming languages. Uh, Travis showed me how he could use R to extract uh, different uh, areas of interest from my data sets in which I would, if I used Excel would be very tedious to extract all those numbers one by one. And uh, finally, again, the opportunity to present my findings was also very beneficial because it opened up uh, my, uh, myself being comfortable to speak in front of larger audiences and being able to uh, actually make sure my research makes sense and people actually understand it and can ask questions and I can be able to answer those questions as well. And uh, I'm going to talk about some of my uh, key takeaways from being a part of this uh, really cool remote internship program, and which is that there's data everywhere. Federal agencies publish huge data sets on their websites, as well as nonprofits as well. So it's very easy to kind of ask a question and find the data that can help you answer it. And it's also very complementary to my GIS minor, in which I'm able to actually apply uh, the things I learned in class 
into a, a product that's beneficial to not only my academic career, but also my professional career as well. And uh, programming languages, I now think are a very big asset because uh, something that could take me a week in Excel could be done easily in like an hour in R or using Python. And uh, the mentorship expert was also great since I was also applying to grad school during that time. Uh, Travis provided a lot of input fr from that and uh, I've actually been accepted into my top four choices and I'm happy about that. <laughs> so, uh, and so uh, after I make that choice, I'll be pursuing a graduate uh, research using GIS and learning about uh, different changing landscapes in our urban society. And uh, some of the areas for improvement or really areas to take into effect would be the software access, making sure uh, you have the ArcGIS software, uh, being able to use a remote, uh, remote uh, data set, as well as uh, project collaborations, having group meetings to make sure you're on task and on track and make sure like you're accountable for your actual project and you're not slacking off. And also increased opportunities to present finance. We only had to present at the TWS, which is the Wilderness Society headquarters in DC. So having opened it up to going to more conferences would have been great as well. Thank you so much.